Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Mr. Rogues. In this video we spotlight forgotten supervillain, the White Rabbit. Throughout the decades, countless vile knaves have reared their ugly mugs to pester our beloved superheroes. Some of these dastardly rogues have gone to stand among the most infamous fictional villains in pop culture history, while others have completely vanished into obscurity. In this episode of Forgotten Supervillains, we spotlight the White Rabbit. The White Rabbit, real name Lorena Dodson, made her first appearance in Marvel Team Up 131, published in 1983. The story, titled The Best Things in Life Are Free, But Everything Else Costs Money, was written by J.M. Dematis and penciled by Carrie Gamble. In the comic, we meet the White Rabbit, kooky leader of the White Rabbit Gang, an odd crew of criminals. White Rabbit leads these fellows in a crime wave across New York, eventually crossing paths with amateur superhero the Frogman. The crooks manage to flee the scene, and shortly afterwards, White Rabbit Rabbit is kind enough to spell out her entire origin story for us. Turns out this demented lady was born into a rich family. She grew up sheltered from the real world, never getting to experience what the rest of us do, and as such took her solace in books. It was in these books the young girl found the excitement she so craved from life, and her favorites among these novels were the Alice books of Lewis Carroll. The girl in fact became obsessed with the mad world of Wonderland. Years later she was married off to an equally rich yet much older man. She never loved him, but eventually he died leaving all of his money to her. This is when we catch up with the present time, as Dodson used her money to start a career of theatrical crime. She naturally chose Wonderland as her theme and took on the identity of the White Rabbit for herself. As a criminal, this unhinged woman experiences life as she always wanted to. Excitement and madcap adventures. After her encounter with Frogman, White Rabbit set out on another heist, but was in the end defeated by the combined efforts of her arch foe Froggy and Spider-Man. Following this issue, White Rabbit disappeared from the crime scene for several years, but returned in his spectacular Spider-Man 185, published in 1991. This story, again written by Demetis, saw the rabbit recruiting the biggest loser villain of them all to her side, the Walrus. Dodson wanted revenge on Frogman, and seeing as how old Frogster had once defeated Walrus too, she saw him as her perfect ally. That and his Walrus gimmick, of course. Together, this duo, calling themselves the Terrible Two, wreaked havoc in downtown New York, trying to lure out the fabulous frogman. Their plan worked, but they also got some unwanted attention from old Webhead. And that was the end of the illustrious criminal career of the Terrible Two. After this comic, the self-proclaimed Queen of Crime disappeared for a while once again. She returned for round 3 in Spectacular 256, published in 1998, yet again by Dematis. This time around, the Mistress of Mayhem kidnaps former loser villains and current wannabe superheroes, the Grizzly and Gibbon. She then gives the city an ultimatum. Unless she's paid one billion dollars in gold by midnight, she'll execute this supposed dynamic duo. This story also revealed that Dodson had murdered her husband herself. We never saw the old Dimitri's White Rabbit again, and when the character eventually returned, she was quite different. In 2006, she appeared in the three-issue miniseries Claws, starring Wolverine and a black cat. In this comic, Dodson is portrayed as a dim-witted bimbo and the lover of arch-villain Arcade. A sequel to Claws was released in 2011, which saw the return of the White Rabbit and Arcade. Besides these appearances, White Rabbit has shown up a few times in small roles and cameos in more recent years, usually to get her ass handed to her by Spidey or as part of some supervillain team. She's been relegated to the sidelines, basically. As for other media, Lorena Dodson has appeared in absolutely nothing. So yeah, I bet many of you didn't know that Batman isn't the only one who's got a white rabbit in his rogues gallery. It's funny too that this character actually has many qualities of several Batman villains. Obviously, the Wonderland theme is very reminiscent of Batman's Mad Hatter, but she also carries a weaponized umbrella, just like the Penguin. Hers usually fires some kind of carrots though. Yeah, you heard that right. Carrots. Explosive carrots, razor sharp carrots, that kind of stuff. Because naturally. In my spot video, I said that he was Spider-Man's killer moth. Well, I actually think it would be more accurate to call Dodson Spidey's killer moth. Just like the moth, White Rabbit dreams of being a supervillain, despite not being cut out for it. She refers to herself as the Queen of Crime and the Mistress of Mayhem, drives around in a bunny mobile, hires actors to play the parts of her henchmen, aspires to team up with other so-called supervillains, wishes to have an arch nemesis in the form of some superhero. She's a normal person playing supervillain, just like the moth. Unlike him though, Dodson is actually insane, and she takes his villain gig dead seriously, despite all the silliness, and she doesn't shy away from killing, so I guess she's a crazy person playing supervillain. 
How can you not love that? I mean, what a character. Why in the hell isn't she as big and famous as Killer Moth? People keep nagging me about doing a Killer Moth video, and I probably will do that in the future, but seriously, this character is even more fun than him. Another thing I love about White Rabbit is her vernacular. She talks like a mix of a stereotypical supervillain and a sophisticated scholar, probably because she's read so many books. Her speech is very reminiscent of the penguins. Well, the old school penguin. So you've got this character talking like this, looking like this, acting like she's this big supervillain. It's pure gold. I had heard of this character before, but I had never actually read her stories. Now I kick myself for not doing so much earlier, I mean seriously. If you're a fan of comic book supervillains, Spider-Man's White Rabbit is a must experience. Of course I'm really talking about the early stuff, by J.M. de Matisse. The later stories aren't that great, and no other writer seemed to be able to nail her character down. A real shame. This nutty gal really could have been something. Spider-Man's de facto Mad Hatter meets Killer Moth, with a touch of Penguin. What an mix. Where the hell do they come up with this stuff? So there you have it. That is the story of forgotten supervillain the White Rabbit. One of the wackiest and most fun spider rogues out there. It's truly a mystery why she doesn't appear more often and why she isn't more popular. What's your take on her? Let me know in the comments. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.